Hi everybody, and welcome to the Super Data Science Series on Seaborn. What are we going to be looking to accomplish, and really what are we going to be doing in this series is experimenting, building, and taking apart the Seaborn library. For those of you who are not familiar with Seaborn, Seaborn is a library for making attractive and informative statistical graphics in Python. It's built on top of matplotlib and also includes support for NumPy and Pandas data structures and statistical routines from SciPy and stats models. So really, what can we take away from that? Well, for one, matplotlib is one of the core features for, or core libraries for building visualizations. But in my opinion, Seaborn extends it so much further and just adds that professional and more of a quality and attractive visualizations through the use of the Seaborn library. In addition, with the support for NumPy and Pandas, we also have the two main statistical um, data structure um, libraries, and we are able to use them easy, efficiently. Seaborn's setup is quick, mainly painless. Um, you know, through the series, we're going to have a lot of fun just building visualizations and examining the information on how Seaborn puts it together and how we can change different things and really look to build attractive visualizations with some interesting data. Now, with all that being said, we can now move on to getting Seaborn set up in our environment. We're going to be using Anaconda. We're going to be using Jupyter Notebooks. So we will get them installed now. And for those of you who already have Anaconda installed, you can scroll forward or skip forward a little bit to see how we install the Seaborn package. Again, if you don't have that already set up, let's first download Anaconda. Now here, if you visit the anaconda.com slash download, you can find the Anaconda distribution for your operating system. If you are installing it on Linux or Windows, just double check to make sure the path is correct if you run any errors or when you're trying to run the install, just make sure you're able to run Conda, you know, open the Anaconda prompt, or on Linux, the Anaconda Navigator, once you have it installed, you might have to edit your bash file. But visit this site, download the Anaconda distribution, again, for your operating system, Windows, Mac, and Linux. We will be using Python 3.6, so you can download it here. If you're using uh, general Python 3, you should be fine. Python 2.7, um, I don't think you're going to have to adapt too much to it. We might run into some syntax errors if you are using 2.7, but we'll be using Python 3 for the purpose of this series, if you would like to follow along um, exactly. So get it downloaded. Once you have it downloaded, open the Anaconda Navigator. And once you have the Anaconda Navigator open, you will see something that looks like this. You can find the applications that we can use from the Anaconda Navigator. We'll be using Jupyter Notebooks for the purpose of this series, but we're gonna navigate into the environments. Again, right now, these are the applications on my, my root of my system. We will go into environments. We're not going to create a new environment for this. We're going to be using root just because we're going to install a simple Seaborn install into it, along with checking if you have matplotlib and pandas installed. So let's navigate into environments. We can go into the root environment and we're going to be selecting all. You can also select and not install to verify as well, but we're going to search package for package and let's start with Seaborn. I do have Seaborn already currently installed, but if you do not, you can click on it and it will give you the option of installing it down here. I'm going to also check matplotlib. I have matplotlib installed as well. I want to check pandas. Pandas is installed as well. And again, it's a very simple process. If you do not have those libraries installed, just check for each one and install it. It'll give you the option to install. I can give you an example right now. Let's create a, a new environment, a test environment. Use Python 3.6. Give it a minute to set up. So the test environment installed. I don't have pandas installed, as you can see. So we can select pandas and then apply. It will install it into your environment. We could do the same thing for Seaborn. Select or search. I have to update my condo. Install Seaborn. Select Seaborn and then select apply. That will install Seaborn into your environment. Again, this is just an example. I will be setting up mine in the root, but if you want to use your own uh, other created environment just to keep things contained, that's fine. Create another environment and just repeat those steps. So we have our environment set up. If you've seen some of the other tutorials that we have, and I highly encourage you to take a look at them, some pretty fascinating and informative tutorials, you will see that this setup is uh, pretty standard. It's just the main way to set up Anaconda, install packages. If we need any other packages throughout the remainder of this series, we can install them 
here through the use of the environments tab and installing our packages, or we can open it a terminal in a kind of prompt and use conda or pip. But now I'm going to navigate back to home. So once we are back home and you have your applications on your route, again, we're working from the route. If you have another environment installed, you can select it, run it from there. We're gonna launch Jupyter Notebook. And now when you have your main page of the Jupyter Notebooks open, you can navigate to new and select Python 3. This will bring a new notebook for us. But before we get started, we need our data. We're gonna have to upload our data and we're gonna upload it into here. So I want you to navigate and for our first tutorial, or for the first Seaborn visualization, just to get you acquainted with Seaborn, we're gonna use something relatively simple. We're gonna be using a bar plot. So let's grab some data for this. We're gonna be using the Game of Thrones data set from Kaggle. If you visit the following link, kaggle.com slash my L-E-S-O-N-E-I-L-L slash Game of Thrones slash data, you can find the data set. Download all, it'll give you the three following files and we can take a quick look. We have the battles.csv, the character deaths.csv, and character predictions.csv. So if you are a fan of Game of Thrones, as a spoiler alert, this might have some information that will reveal certain things to you. So again, spoiler alert, this does contain Game of Thrones information. But moving on, we can download all. Once you have them downloaded, unzip the zip file, and we're gonna go back into the home. You can upload, click on upload, find the folder that you just unzipped, and download or bring in. Right now we're gonna be using the battles.csv so we can find it. I have it in battles.csv and open it, upload it here, and we're gonna import it into our Jupyter Notebook with pandas in a moment. We now have our Jupyter Notebook open. Let's give it a title. Let's call it example one. We can rename it just for organizational purposes. And now we can work on our import statements. So since we're working on Seaborn, let's import Seaborn as we'll use SNS. Let's also import pandas as PD. And we need import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. And one last thing we need to add in, this is just because sometimes the Jupyter Notebooks uh, have a display requirement so we can visualize the graphs in line in the Jupyter Notebook. We will be using this, the matplotlib inline command. And we can run this just to have our import statements set up. And you can see we have it imported. No problems, no errors. If you did run into an error, just again, make sure the package or the library is installed and make sure you are in the correct environment. Now let's get our data set loaded in. Again, we remember we're using the battles.csv. So we're going to call it data frame. So df equals pd.read underscore csv and pass in the path of the file, which would be battles.csv since we are using the Jupyter Notebook. Okay, we can run that, that's fine. Since we are working with a new data frame, what I always like to do is to run a few commands. There are multiple ways of doing this, just to become more familiar and to reference your data. So I would like to see the, d the data type, so you can run df for data frame, dot d types, and we have the output. We can see the types of data for our columns, and I also like to have a visualization reference so I can actually see the columns and see the data within. So we can do df.head and let's see the top 10. And we can run that as well. And this will actually give us the output of our data frame. So we can see the columns and the rows. We have you know name, year, battle number, attacker king, defender king, et cetera, et cetera. If you also visit the Kaggle data set, you can see the uh, column metadata if you want to get some additional context if you're trying to extend this further or work with it It's always a good idea to take a look at where you're obtaining the data from again just to get further information Let's navigate back to our Jupyter notebook And we have the following so let's build a bar plot And to get started with our bar plot, I'm gonna actually set a style one great thing of Seaborn and we could do a quick reference again it has built-in themes and styles. You can see here as quick examples. If you scroll through, you know, you have figure styles. You also have uh, removing of the axis spines. You have the option of overriding elements of the Seaborn styles. You can go through and take a look. But what I'm going to do now is use SNS for Seaborn.set 
style. Again, it allows us to set our style and we can set it as white grid. It's gonna give us a white grid background on our bar plot. So we have the, the SNS.set style, we're using white grid. We can return and we need to give our visualization a name. We need to give it a variable, a name. Let's call it example one, simple enough. And we can do the following. When you're setting a Seaborn plot, you will use SNS. Again, that's how we used it in the import statement. SNS, again, using bar plot, that's the plot we're doing. And we need to set our X and Y for the axes along with the data. So let's take a look at the year compared to major death. So we'll set our X equal to year, comma, and we want to set our Y equal to major underscore depth. Again, following comma, and we need to pass in the data where we're getting this data from, data equals data frame. Again, the name of our data frame. Now with that set, let's run it. We can go up and run it, and we can see the visualization, we can see our white grid, we have our major depth, we have our year, and we can see our values. Now, again, this was a basic example, but you can see the quality and the attractive visualizations that Seaborn allows you to build. And this was a simple one that we built relatively quickly. We're gonna be exploring this further. We're gonna be using more and progress onto more detailed plots. We're gonna also be taking a look at how to build them, more information on really what's going on with operations of Seaborn. And I hope, in addition to installing Seaborn on your machine and getting everything set up, that this tutorial helped you become a little more familiar with Seaborn, just some basic operations, in addition to providing some beginning context for the Seaborn library. If you have any questions or comments, please share them. And also subscribe to the Super Data Science channel. It's just a great way to stay in tune with what's going on in the industry. And I will see you in the next part of our series.